Hey, what's going on guys? 118 Set Shadow here. Reprints is the highlight for today's Market Watch. From what you can see, Set 9 is getting another wave of the front crit and draw effect triggers. And that's not all. In addition to the trigger reprints, we're also getting reprints of triple raw cards from Set 4, including the much coveted and much desired Brainwash Swirler and Inlet Pulse Dragon. They're getting reprinted as part of Set 9, but as to whether or not they're going to be mainstream Triple R's or special reprint Triple R's, I'm not sure, but they are being put in here as Triple R Rarity. In addition to these two, we've got Trick Moon in here, which is also pretty good. And then we've also got effectively placeholders for Brant Gate and Cater Sanctuary here. It seems that they were aiming for a reprint for each nation, but to be fair, there was a better one that they could have selected for Brant Gate, which I'll go over in a bit. But first let's take a look at how this news affected the market. In particular, it really hammered Inlet Pulse. This card was on its way to $50 from its listings, but now it's dropped off hard to the point where you can find it for $30, $35. Basically, all these low listings are coming back on the market, and give it some more time, and we will probably see more continue to hit the market. Brainwash Swirler, on the other hand, has not seen any movement thanks to this news yet. Days ago, it was still selling for $50 per copy, but we're still looking at $45 for the low listings right now, and there are still $50 listings as well. But the number of listings overall has gone up as compared to before. We've still got 12, so I would imagine more of them will end up hitting the market over the next few days, but we'll have to see. Trick Moon has also not really seen any changes. We're looking at $19 for the minimum listings right now, $20 overall. But just like with Brainwasher, with this reprint announcement, I would imagine more listings are going to hit the market pretty soon. Then we've also got cards that really aren't going to be affected by this news at all, like Masurea is basically unknown to most of the game. It's got 53 listings at this point. Dark Knight support, where it pumps itself up by power, and for one of the instances it gains power, it'll also get a crit. But unfortunately, Orphis has greater support than that already, so even the SP has a good number of listings, and it's only a dollar to pick up. The other card, Heavenly Pike of Solicitation Kornvok, is also very neglected bastion support where all it does is grab a grade 3 that is not this card from the top of your deck. Essentially this doesn't get played in bastion at all at least not from what I've seen and so it's as cheap as Murea is and the SP is also only a dollar to pick up. Buck Birito is another Triple R from set 4 for Brantgate. This would have been a better candidate to put in place of the Cardinal Draco, as it's $13, $14 to pick up, and there are quite a few listings sitting at this point right now. Gravidia is getting some more support, so it's no surprise that this card has gone up in value, and the SP as well has also risen, with only 4 listings remaining. We're looking at 31 that's the low, and then it's already sold over $30. Overall, we're looking at $35 for the majority of listings. So, yep, that's a thing. But I also have to question why Bushiroad went specifically for set 4. They completely forgot that set 1 through 3 exist. Especially set 1, which has a lot of big cards that really need reprints right now. Bulba Mine is probably the biggest example of this. Painkiller Angel is also a good one to reprint. And then in terms of Bastion support, Grand Heavenly Sword Alden is something that they could have taken a look at too. 
Alden is going up in value slowly. It's at $7 right now. It had increased from 5 from the last time I took a look at it. And I had originally been selling these at 3 months ago. So it's gone up since then. Not much of a surprise, to be honest, given that it is a staple to play in Bastion right now. And it's highly likely that it's going to be a staple for any reoccurring variation of Bastion to come. The SP, on the other hand, we're looking at $18 listings right now. And it looks like it has been selling a few times at $18, so... It may end up becoming 20 but I feel like it might just settle around 15 for a little while. But if we do get news of a new Bastion coming out, I would expect one this card to be one of the few that gets a lot of attention. And speaking of new boss variations, Bushiroad also gave us a sneak preview of Will Dress Season 2. I think they actually showed us the first episode during their live yesterday. And they featured a bunch of new cards for Nirvana Jeeva, as well as Bruce. We now know how Final Burst works, or at least we got an idea of how it works from the anime. They haven't officially announced Bruce's effect, so take all this with a grain of salt. I'm basically just repeating what I saw from the episode. So the thing about Bruce is that it uses Final Rush. It actually uses Final Rush, but the way it uses it is different from the original Bruce. Now what it does is Bruce will activate Final Rush during your battle phase, and the Final Rush state will continue until the end of your opponent's next turn. You no longer have the double restand effect for Soul Blast, so you don't have that anymore. But the thing is that by having Final Rush on your first grade 3 turn, you enable a lot of your support cards to work without needing to wait a turn to go into Final Rush now. So with that in mind, let's take a look at some of these cards. We've got Julian, for instance, who I've talked about a few times. This doesn't require Final Rush at all, but is still very playable with Bruce. Diablo's Girl Natalia. This is something else I also forgot to mention. In order to trigger Final Rush for Bruce, all of your units must be Diablos. So this brings up another point that it looks like Bushiroad is heading towards named archetypes for different, for different states again. And it looks like our new Bruce, Venice Bruce, is going to be revolving around the Diablos archetype. So you'll need to take a look at the different Diabloses that exist, including this front trigger, which is also a Diablos. Diablos Madonna Megan from Festival 2022 is running out of quantities and is almost $7 now. Eden was actually featured during the episode, so definitely take a look at that one. My Mai is also pretty high in price for its crit trigger SP right now, but now that we know that Diablos is required for Bruce, you might want to consider looking at some of these SP triggers as other players may look to pick them out since they're still in the tens. Leonard is also usable with the new Bruce. However, you won't be able to use its full effect as you do require Violence Bruce to be able to call cards from the soul. The rest of the effect still works as long as you're in Final Rush. Mabel has been going up in value. This card was... 25 cents, 30 cents for the last day, and, or not the last day, apparently it was 50 cents, huh. But in any case, it's gone up. Now people are buying this card for one dollar. And the number of listings available is still really high, but we're looking at a dollar for pretty much all of them now. Essentially, this card will give Bruce triple drive, and since Final Rush will trigger during the battle phase, you can use this on your first grade 3 turn. That's the other thing you'll have to keep in mind when looking through some of these Diablos units. You have to keep in mind that Final Rush now works during the battle phase and during your opponent's turn. It no longer works during your main phase. 
So final rush skills that trigger during the main phase won't work anymore, like Pandemonium Tactics won't work anymore, Derek's second skill doesn't work anymore, so you have to keep that in mind. Lyle won't work if you call it during the battle phase. Stuff like Ivanka will work though, where it's on hit pressure. Essentially, if this card's boosted attack hits the vanguard and you're in final rush, you can put a unit to the bottom of your deck and give another unit power along with drawing, which also opens up circles for you to perform multi-attack combos with Julian. It is on hit pressure though, so you do have to keep that in mind. But another card that was featured during the episode was Stephanie from set 4. It's a common. If you're in final rush, all your other units in the same column get 5k. Remember how I said that Venice Bruce triggers final rush during your opponent's turn too? Put this behind your vanguard and Bruce will be 18k during your opponent's turn. Neat, huh? Then you've also got some other Diabloses that work when called from soul like DeAndre and Kristen who are both from set 6, one provides you with additional soul charges, the other gets additional power based off your damage. And then there are a bunch more Diabloses that you can look through. Definitely take a look through some of these. There are four pages worth of Diabloses to select for, from. Just remember, if they only work during the main phase, they won't work with Venice Bruce. Then taking a look at some other cards, Roaming Prison Dragon has run out of listings. We're now down to three, and it's been selling pretty well. Oh no, we're at two listings left. Nine dollars to pick it up at the low, and then it goes to thirty dollars. So if you have these, good time to put them on the market because people are buying. And as to why this is getting bought out, I think I have a good reason for you. It's Giumpia's release or reveal from last week because Gunfia allows for this card to attack twice and because this card can gain a crit due to its own skill as long as you play in order it can attack with two crit twice and the second attack will be stronger due to the plant gauge interaction. Roaming Prison Dragons SP has also been running out of quantities. We're looking at $19 on the sell and then $25 right now, so yeah, if you have these, you're sitting on some more money here. And then another one that has gone up for its triple rare right now, Rogue Headhunter. This card was in the dollars some time back, but it's been going up for the last two months and now is $5. This card is from set 2 and is intended to be worked with Alchemagic. If you play it in order this turn, it gets 5k continuous, and when it's placed on rear guard, the next time you Alchemagic, reduce the order's cost by Counterblast 1. To that same point about Alchemagic support, Zorga is also running out of quantities. There are only 6 listings starting at $11 right now, and we are seeing sales at 12 so definitely keep an eye out for this one, or... This might be a decent time to get into it if you haven't already. The thing is, with the new Will Dress in effect, there's anticipation that Zorga will get some features and more support. We don't know that for certain yet, but it is something to keep your eye out for. Desire Devil Dofund, who's also from Festival 2022, is out of stock for its SP, and only two listings left for its triple R starting at $15, and only at $15. So yeah, Greed on Dark Horse Greed on is really putting in work on value in the market here some places. And then to wrap things up, set six. I've been talking about the second printing for a while now, and it looks like we're finally starting to see the effects. More listings are hitting the market, unfortunately not as much for the high-end rarities. Nirvana Jiva's still got 14 listings at 60 to start. Schneisel's only got 3! And now we have 195 as the minimum. $75, $78... 
if this sells at 195 oh man i have no i have no idea what to think at that point and looks like this decided to switch to best selling so let's have a look here skyball arms has been selling pretty well We've got 23 listings on the market again, and the price has dropped off from 40 to 30. Deontha's also been selling pretty well. Despite the fact that its number of listings increased, the fallout on its price has not fallen too much. It was $18, now it's $15, and it's 11 listings is still kind of low, but it's still better than the 4 listings that we had before. Combined Rusher has also increased in listings and is now $29 to start with, so basically $30 to pick up. Nirvana Jiva, 17 listings, but it's still above 20, which is a little troublesome. Schneisel and Gust, 24 and 30 listings respectively, with $20 and $23. These prices are falling out. Planet Wall Dragon was going to $3 and is back under 2 for the time being with 15 listings. Leonorn, 17 listings. It's just under $10 to pick up. Some of the over-triggers like Eldo Breath have fallen out a little bit, but they're still holding on value right now. Dragvedia is also holding around 9 Frozen Resentment, which had gone to 5 plus, is now back to 4 for its minimum. As the months go by up until set 9, we should see some more listings hit the market, so it's a fair chance that prices will continue to go down for the next month or two, but that could be on a case-by-case -case basis, so pay attention to what's happening with the listings and the prices. That's it for today's Market Watch. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. And if you've got any requests, just let me know and I will see if I can incorporate them in my next video. I'll see you guys next time.